What's up YouTube? Welcome to Automotive Life. My name is Lucky and today's video is all about my top 10 tips on how to purchase cars at the auction. Now today I'm making a quick video because we just hit 20,000 subscribers. So I wanted to thank you guys so much. We'll go into that a little bit later on in the video. But we're right in the middle of actually building the studio if you see behind me. You hear a little bit of an echo. We haven't put the carpet down or the sound deadening or anything else like that. Um, we weren't able to get a really large studio. We were hoping to get something around six to 7,000 square feet, but everything we found here in Vegas either had swamp coolers only, which would be extremely loud when we're trying to film, or it didn't have AC at all. There was no swamp coolers, no AC. And there's a shortage of commercial real estate when it comes to warehouses in Las Vegas, and the prices are just obscene. So. We decided to hold off, so we got this small one in the meantime. But as you can see, we just put up these wall panelings yesterday. We're gonna be painting this all flat gray. We have another three rooms. We're gonna be doing different colors. And we're gonna be setting up something really cool where we're gonna be having, um, we're gonna bring cars in here. We're gonna talk about cars. Right behind me is gonna be like the tool corner. We're gonna be talking about the new tools that are coming out, tech, stuff like that. Um, one of the other things on the other side, we're gonna have a new desk where we're gonna talk about more business stuff and I have this really cool 80 inch TV that as I'm talking about this stuff, I can actually point to it and show you guys and scroll on the mouse so this way it gives you a little more better idea of how in depth we get when it comes to buying cars, fixing cars, ordering parts, stuff like that. Um, the next one in the third room, we're actually gonna set up a podcast slash interview section. And I have a few people already lined up where they're also YouTubers and other people in the car industry. We're gonna talk about you know um, what it's like to be a YouTuber, what it's like to own a bunch of cars. If you're in the automotive industry, we have a few companies from banks to flooring companies to auction houses that are gonna sit down. It's almost gonna be like an interview area, kind of like a uh, talk show type of atmosphere. You know, we wanna make sure that we wanna bring people in, get as much information as we can. So our goal is to get that built up. So this was the first step was getting this studio. Okay guys, before I get into the video, if you could do me a huge favor and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, it helps you find more amazing people like yourselves that enjoy automotive content. Also, if you can subscribe, if you feel like you've learned anything, I would truly appreciate it. Without any more shameless plugging, let's get into the video. So today's video idea came from me watching a few of my friends at the auction purchasing vehicles, as well as a few of the people that I'm teaching and coaching, uh, my students buying vehicles themselves. After the auction, I was with a lot of my friends and they were having major buyer's remorse. They bought a lot of cars, way overpriced. They bought the wrong cars. They didn't realize certain things. So I wanna give you some of my tips so this way you guys don't fall into that pitfall and lose a lot of money. So my first tip, which I'm gonna emphasize a lot, is do your research way before the auction. Never purchase the day of, just walk in there and just like start bidding on stuff. Now, if you've been doing this for 10, 15 years, then you know what you're doing, you know the market, you're good to go, just go ahead and go for it. But if I would say if you were three years into the, your, your business and below, I would definitely take heed of some of these tips when it comes to purchasing vehicles. Now, I like to do a lot of research a few days before. So let's say your auction falls on a Thursday, that's what happens here in Vegas. On Monday or Tuesday, they will release a list of vehicles that are coming up. I will go through the list first. I will check the ones that I'm interested in. After I check those ones, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna start looking at the condition reports and everything about them. Now, it's very important that you need to click and see all the condition reports and go through it really, really thoroughly because on the, the regular auction page, there's gonna be general information about the car and sometimes they make announcements. But if you go to the condition report, sometimes there may be one other notes that are not in the first one, or there may be notes that are counteracting it. And I'll give you a few examples. So, you know, if you're purchasing a car and let's say you found a Toyota Corolla and it looks great, looks clean, you love it, you don't see any notes in the thing, you, you bid on it. And next thing you know, you come to find out that you didn't look at thoroughly enough at the condition report. And maybe it's TMU, maybe it says it runs and drives, but there's no reverse. Um, has other uh, issues, maybe it has a junk title, which I've seen that happen quite a few times. Don't ever buy those, I'll make a separate video about that. Um, you know, a lot of these people don't pay attention to that. So they're like, well, it wasn't in the announcements, I wanna arbitrate it. But if it's in the CR announcements, it's still technically the announcement, so you can't get out of it. But you wanna make sure that you check both of those very, very thoroughly. As well as, I've actually purchased a vehicle, it was a Dodge Charger. Um, they said that it had a blown head gasket in the actual ad or excuse me, in the announcements that motor was bad. But then if you go to the condition report, it says 
um, you know, car's thermostat and water pump were leaking, thought it was overheating because of that, replaced it, car's good to go, listed as running and driving. So sometimes when they're doing the CR reports, the, the, the technicians in the back of the shop will actually put something in there that'll supersede the actual announcements on the auction. So when I was bidding on this car, everybody at the auction house, all they saw was bad motor. So nobody was bidding on it. Nobody took the time to read the CR report and actually see that there was, you know, repairs done to the vehicle and now it's good to go. So I bet on that car and I got it like maybe four grand back a book, you know, but you can get a lot of good deals like that if you take the time and do the research, you know, because I, I hate to see people go the last minute and just start bidding on cars and next thing you know, you screw yourself. So my second tip is now that you have the list of all the cars that you want and you've gone through the condition reports, the next thing is we're gonna do auto check and car faxes on every single one. So if you're a dealer, you wanna make sure you do all these things because each one's gonna show you a little bit different information. So even though it may come up as a clean title at the auction, titles can be washed if they go from state to state. What that means is um, if you buy a car in Vegas and you take it to Georgia, sometimes it may be a rebuilt title here. Once it gets to Georgia, it may be clean. So you wanna make sure that you do the research and find out that you actually have a clean title car and everything is good to go. The mileage lines up and also to see if there's any type of disparency because like I said, sometimes if you buy in what's called the, um, if you buy a red light, it's as is, where is, how is. So you need to make sure you check all your vehicles so it fits in your lending parameters. Because remember, some banks don't take frame, some banks don't take TMU, and some banks don't take rebuilt titles. So you need to know these things before you purchase. Tip number three is know your lane. What I mean by know your lane is basically buy in the lane that best suits your dealership. I made a video about this just the other day where I see a lot of people looking for deals that go buy in the T lane or TRA lane, which is the non-runners mechanical issues. And then I see some people go out and buy in the rebuilt lane, salvage lane, um, bank lanes, there's, there's all kinds of different lanes. If you're a small independent dealer and you don't have a shop, stick to yellow and green light cars. Um, preferably under you know 120,000 miles, 120 to maybe 80,000 or 70,000 to about 120,000 miles. Stay in that realm. Stuff that's that needs a little bit of work, but nothing too much. That's something you can do with maybe a nice mobile mechanic, a small uh, mom and pops repair shop. Don't buy out of your lane, because I know it's very tempting. You're you're paying, you know. 16K for a Malibu, but you see one two lanes down going for eight, but just needs a motor, don't do it. You're gonna buy it, you're gonna get stuck with it, you don't have the facilities to take care of your car. As well as staying in your lane, buy what suits your dealership. If all your cars are under $10,000, don't go out and buy a $20,000 truck because you got a good deal on it. Stay out of it, stay in your lane. Make sure you buy the cars that best suit you. Also, what I mean by stay in your lane is buy in your financial lane. I see a lot of people that get excited. They're like, you know, I always wanted to maybe, we just saw one of my guys, he bought a SUT truck Hummer, beautiful cars, but it was supercharged, had all this crazy stuff lifted. I think MMR and it was like 29,000, he paid like 26. So he was bragging that he got it back of MMR. But at the end of the day, he's gonna try to sell it for 30 something thousand and it's an 07, I think, or 06. So a lot of banks are not gonna finance it and then all the people that are gonna want it are usually gonna have okay to bad credit. So he's gonna be stuck with that car. And on top of that, he bought it on his floor plan. You know, he usually sells cars under $10,000. He could have bought three cars for that one Hummer. He could have made maybe three, $4,000 of each of those cars really quick because it's tax season now, or now he's gonna sit on that car forever. I mean, he gets to drive it and feel cool, but you know, he bought out of his financial lane and now he's in trouble with that. Tip number four is knowing about your fees and your actual flooring. So a lot of people buy cars and they don't take the time to really learn how their floor plans work. Now, let's say you go out and you buy a $1,500 car and you're excited, you're like, wow, I got this car cheap, I'm gonna fix it up, sell it for like $59.95, it's gonna be a quick tax season car, you know? Well, let's say you buy that car for $1,500, you know, if you don't know, depending on what days of auctions and what auctions you buy them, your fees can range anywhere from $100 to like $700. Like we just purchased a car from Copart that was two grand that had like $690 in fees. It's insane. So these are some of the things you need to know before you start going out and buying your cars at the auction because there's nothing worse than like, you know, you, you already paid, let's say MMR or book for a car. So you're thinking, okay, well, I'll break even. 
you get your $300 or $400 auction fee on top of that. Then your flooring fee hits you with another $200 in fees, you know, and now you're coming out of the auction and you're just like, wow, I'm, I'm like $600, $700 over book. And maybe the margin on that vehicle is only about $1,000 after the bank charges you your bank fees. So you really need to know exactly what your fees are and what your flooring fees are before you buy it. Now, when it comes to the auctions, they'll give you a list. You can ask for it. They don't like to give it out. They'll never have that hanging on the walls anywhere. You say, look, I want to buy certain cars. And sometimes there'll be a breakdown. It'll be a dollar amount. It may be a certain amount for your dealership. You can work these prices out with your uh, auctions if you're a good buyer and if you've been buying for a long time. If you're a new guy, don't even waste your time. They're just going to laugh at you. So, you know, get the list of pricing, know what you're going to be at. Second one is you can get the exact same from your flooring companies. Now, right now there's a little bit of specials going on because it is tax season. So some of the flooring companies like AFC are offering 90 days for $90. So you can go out and purchase the vehicle, you know, and floor it on your line for only 90 days for $90, which is a great bargain. So that's when I tell people, you know what? This is the time to buy as many cars as you can because your carrying cost is much lower and you don't have to worry about risking all your money on that. So you can go out and purchase, you know, maybe 20, 30 extra cars because of tax season, you know, and our, our stimulus ballers that are out there and be able to put that towards that without worrying about being too much in crushing debt and, and getting a massive amounts of fees and interest and penalties. Now, you know, in the back of your head, you got 90 days to liquidate those vehicles. Tip number five is pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to say it anyways. You come to the auction to work. Now, I know we see a lot of our friends and our buddies and we go talk to them and we say hi and we you know, shoot the shit and everything else. That's all fine and dandy. But you need to come ready for work. I see a lot of people that just show up, they BS with their friends, they just wanna show that they're buying cars so this way it doesn't look like they're dead. First of all, don't buy into that hype. It almost feels like a high school vibe, like you're trying to impress other people. Don't. You, I, I strongly urge you guys to bring a clipboard with you write the numbers of the cars you want and you write the book of what you're actually gonna buy and then you write the actual price of what you're willing to pay and then make sure you include recon costs in there and don't go a penny over that. You know, and then also I've seen the guys that bring the clipboards, they'll hit a certain number and they'll walk away, you know, because they're come focused for their actual game plan. So come that particular way, like I said, don't bring your friends with you, don't bring a camera with you, you know, the only reason I do it is just to share some information with you guys, but if you guys see me at the actual auction, I don't have a bunch of people with me, I don't bring my friends in, I don't shoot the shit with a lot of people, I'll talk for a few minutes, but after that, it's game time, I'm going to each car, checking my stuff out, and going through it very thoroughly. So don't, like I said, it's, it's a cool spot to be, I love the auction house, but don't get sucked up to the hype. Don't fall like you're, or feel like you're falling back into high school where you want to talk to everybody and, and purchase cars just to show that you're still relevant. Don't do it. Just go there to work and that's it. Okay, tip number six is going about the values of your vehicle. Now, you've heard me talk about MMR. MMR is basically uh, a Mannheim market value uh, that gives every vehicle that lets you know exactly what it's worth. So a lot of people scan this thing and they look at it and they say, wow, MMR $6,000, I'm gonna go pay $6,000 for this car. And like knuckleheads, they just bid on it, six grand, they got it. They didn't add in the features, they didn't take in the condition report. Sometimes it auto-populates information and it may not even be the right model. So let's say you wanna buy a Tahoe and you're looking at a Tahoe and you scam it and scan it and you're like, wow, this Tahoe is worth $8,800. And you bid it and you're like, wow, I bought it for 7,500 bucks. I just got a screaming deal. But if you look at MMR, it'll tell you the models that go against it. And so if you look, if let's say your Tahoe's two wheel drive, it's got cloth interior and doesn't have a third row seat. But the last eight in your region were all LTZ's navigation leather four x four. It's gonna go off a general price of those particular vehicles. Now some sub models break off into other ones, but MMR doesn't always do that. So I strongly suggest you don't rely on MMR because the, a few of the students and the people I was talking about earlier that basically buried themselves in cars, that's what they did. They, they basically live and die by MMR. Don't do that. The reason we get the list the day before is we go and do our research. So one of the things that I recommend doing is you get your cars lists and you go over Kelly Wholesale Blue Book. If you're on the East Coast, you can look at NADA or Black Book, whatever your banks use to lend. And you wanna make sure you buy it below that 
MMR is just what it goes at the auction. Right, right now, all the cards are going up because people are buying at the auction. You don't want to do that. And the other reason you want to know the book is, perfect example, Toyotas and Hondas. We all know everybody loves them, they all want them, but wholesale and retail is like this. There's a very, very thin gap of margin that you're gonna make on those cars. So when you buy it for MMR, you're thinking, wow, I made some money. But at the end of the day, if the retail is here and your MMR is right here, there's nothing left there. Where a lot of times you hear me talking about Hyundais. I buy the hell out of Hyundais. MMR is here, but retail is up here. The gap is huge. So, you know, you could buy, you can buy a 2015 Camry with like 80,000 miles and pay maybe let's say 10 or 11 grand. Or you can pay six, $7,000, get a 15 Altima, I mean, excuse me, a Sonata with the exact same miles for like six to $7,000. But now you can retail them both for 13,995 or whatever you wanna sell them for and you get that huge profit on the actual Hyundai. You know, so a lot of people don't realize that and they just go off of MMR and they start buying like crazy. So one of the apps that I personally recommend is called Laser Appraiser. When you scan it, it gives you the auto check, it gives you Black Book, NADA, Kelly Wholesale, and MMR. It gives you all of these things. So this way you can make an educated decision when it comes to buying. Because like I said, you could buy MMR, but you're gonna get screwed in the back end. So make sure that you do your research, not only on the cars and availability, but what you could sell them for as far as through the banks. Now, like I said, if you don't do this, you're gonna be stuck with some cars or you're gonna be so high in there's gonna be no profit and there's no point in even buying it. Okay, tip number seven is gonna be a little bit counterproductive when it comes to being an independent dealer, but unfortunately, I'm gonna be honest and tell you guys, when I go to the auction, I buy from banks, repo companies, and you know some other uh, uh, title loan companies and stuff like that. I will not purchase cars through an actual uh, independent dealership. If it's a franchise store, I'll buy it, but I will not buy from independent stores. The reason is a lot of independents will, if they can't fix the car, they'll just send it the way it is. So most people automatically think that, oh, I got this car for a good deal, but you bought it from an independent. More than likely they tried to fix it, they couldn't do it, maybe they Mickey Moused it, they did some really crazy stuff. And I've had a lot of people have a lot of issues. When I first started, I did buy a lot of cars from a few of my friends, but I noticed that the trend was, one of all, they'd lie to you. Most independents are gonna be like, oh bro, it's a good car, it just needs this. You know, and usually, like if I tell my guys, hey, the transmission's bad, replace the transmission, I'm being honest. So I figured they would do the same respect and courtesy in telling me that. Hey man, what's up with this car? And, and keep in mind, some of these dealers I've been friends with for over 10 years. And oh, oh lucky, it's not that bad. It, it's just got a, a little bit of a smog issue. You know, it won't pass smog. And I'm like, okay, cool, is it smoke or do anything? Oh, no, no, I just check engine light for O2s. So I'm thinking, okay, O2s, maybe catalytic converter, I'll purchase this vehicle. So I do a friendly thing, I bid on his car because my friend didn't have a shop, I did, so my cost is gonna be much lower than his. I get it, transmission's slipping, things blowing smoke, and I asked him, I was like, why did you sell me this car? I asked you if it had any smoking issues. Well, dude, you got a good deal, you bought a back of book, and you have a shop so you can fix it. Don't do it. Don't buy from independents because I'm guaranteeing you, if they couldn't fix it, there's a reason why they're selling it. So tip number eight is the flip side of the coin. It's buying cars from franchise stores, um, banks, and some of the other lenders. Now, trust me, one thing, no one ever trades in a good car. If somebody's driving around their car, they're sick of it, they're tired of it, it's got little issues, they're trading it into the franchise store. So even though you're getting it franchise store, green light, there may be some issues with it. Same thing when it comes to bank repos. You gotta remember, a lot of these people couldn't afford their payments, so their cars got repoed. If they couldn't afford the payments, they definitely couldn't afford the maintenance. So always plan on spending a little bit of money on those vehicles, so this way you can get your money back. You know, And, and keep in mind, that, like I said, it's not gonna be a perfect car. Now, your odds of buying something like an independent dealer is much, much less because at the end of the day, the banks are not going to take the time to Mickey Mouse all this stuff and zip tie everything like franchise or independents do because most of them, are like if the trendy's bad, it's bad. They don't care. They just want to get rid of it. Where independents, they'll do whatever it takes to drive forward. If, whether they got to put seven gallons of Lucas in it, they I've seen people actually um, weld differentials. Um, put different size wheels on cars with one lug nut just to get it to roll across the block. So I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff, but hey, it is what it is. So just keep in mind that even though you're buying from these particular stores, you're not gonna be able to buy a perfect car at any means. So tip number nine is 
for all my independent dealers that like to buy a little bit nicer cars or maybe a little bit more Highline cars. So I'd say from anything from $12,000 all the way up to $60,000. Anytime you buy something that's green light or yellow light, I strongly urge you to get a PSI, which is a post-sale inspection. What this does is it guarantees you that if you have an issue with the vehicle, if, you, if it wasn't any announcement, it's over $500, you can get your money back. There's nothing worse than paying $60,000 for an S-Class and saying it's green light. You drive it off the lot and all of a sudden the transmission goes out on you while you're driving it. But once you take it off the auction, that's it. Now, some specialty ones have a seven day return policy or something like that, but it's very, very tricky. When you do the post sale inspection, you basically guarantee that whatever they find, it's on the auction house, you didn't touch it, it they'll take it back. And it's a great way to get some money off the vehicles. I can't tell you how many times where I went out and bought some cars that were anywhere from 20 to $30,000, trucks, SUVs that were green light from like Capital One or some of these uh, franchise stores, you know, and let's say I paid $25,000 for a truck and then I come to find out that, hey, the four x four is not engaging, this is not engaging. If it's over $500 to repair, they will let the franchise store, the bank know that, hey, look, you said this car was green light. It has about maybe $2,000 in, in mechanical issues. You know, do you want to unwind the sale or do you want to just give the customer $2,000 back? The bank or the franchise store can decide to give you the $2,000 to fix it or they're just gonna cancel the deal all the way around and you can go ahead and you know, save yourself the money and go buy another vehicle. These post-sale inspections are very important because it helps your risk. I'd rather pay 120 bucks and like I said, if, if you lose that money and they take it back, whatever, it's well money spent because I don't wanna see you guys buy something to get stuck with it. You know, Make sure you buy these post-sale inspections to save yourself a lot of money. Okay guys, tip number 10, and this one is gonna be about auction etiquette. And you're gonna ask me, well, how does this help me buy cars? It helps you not look like a dumbass, and which if you're not a dumbass and you're not an idiot, most uh, banks, franchises, whoever else that's repping the cars on the block will notice that. So the very first thing, if you're buying cars, and you're looking at the auction house and you see the car that you want, you walk up to the auction lane. You don't wave from six blocks ahead. I hate people like that, like they're three lanes over and they're like going like this, expecting the person to see it. And then if they don't see it, they get all upset. So if you're bidding on a car in a particular lane, you take your ass to that lane and you go talk to them. You make eye contact with them. You never make hand gestures. You never point at anything. You never look at anything. You don't wave hi to a friend. None of that. Keep your hands in your pockets. I usually sit just like this, and then I wait for the cards. I make eye contact with the guy, and I hold up my hand. That's it. Don't wave. Don't click at everybody. Don't high five anybody. You know. And then don't get caught up with the head nods. I see a lot of franchise store guys. They're like they sit like this, and they, you know, they give a nod or they look or they say okay. Don't do that because at one time you're talking to your friend, and you're doing this, and then they see your head, and you're usually a head nodder. Boom! It's a bid, and you got to remember. If you raise your hand or you do that and it counts, that's it, you bought the car. Even if it's a $60,000 car and you don't have the money for it, if you don't pay, they will kick your ass out of the auction. So it's very, very important that you do not raise your hand or do certain bids like that. Another thing I tell people is, as you're sitting there, you know, be friendly. If they make a mistake, you know, whatever else, you know, say, oh, sorry, I, 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 I was pointing at my friend. Always be friendly. There's too many dealers that are assholes, and I don't know why this is. You know, they'll go over there, and then they'll start telling the banker, like, they're looking at the car. This car's a piece of shit. You want too much money for it. Don't be like, oh, sorry, my budget's $6,000 for this car. Don't go over to the banker and tell them it's a piece of shit, because you got to remember, these guys you see every single week. I befriend them all. Bring them donuts, say hello. You know, when you're buying one or two cars, stay in that lane. Maybe he'll give you a deal on a few other ones if you keep bidding. You know, some of these things, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I feel like I have to say it because 90% of the dealers that watch these things are the biggest assholes on earth. So, you know, be a nice guy. Um, keep your hands in your pockets. You know, if another dealer's bidding, I, I truly recommend, like, if you're friends with them, hey, do you need this car? If he says yes, let him have it. Make a deal with them. You know, there's got to be some sort of honor amongst thieves. A few dealers I know, I work with, hey, bro, I really need this truck. Okay, you can have it. Don't tell me, hey, Lucky, I got a customer for this car. I really got to have it. I'll step back. You know, you'll get these gentlemen agreements with other dealers that will take you a long way as you're building your, your thing. But if you're one of these guys that's just overbidding and chopping everybody off, nobody's gonna ever get you a deal. And I've seen some big dealers, 
Um, there's one here, I won't say his name, but if he doesn't like you, he will outbid you every single time just to piss you off. This guy's got you know seven dealerships, multimillionaire, and I've watched him crush small independents because they were rude to him or you know they didn't honor their word. He let him have a car, but he wanted the next one. They still bid on it anyways. So you know, it's just a little bit of auction etiquette. You know, will take you a long way. And also for me, come dressed like I'm not dressed up fancy. I'm wearing a polo shirt and jeans. Don't look like you're homeless. I don't understand. Some of these dealers are worth, you know, millions of dollars and they show up with a dirty shirt, like sweatpants or basketball shorts showing off their underwear and everybody can see the skid marks in your shorts. It's like, it's a joke. Be professional. This is why everybody thinks that most of us dealers are clowns is because this is the way they act when they go out to the auctions. So please present yourself as a professional because you are. Your job is to help 90% of the people on this planet get a car because everybody drives and you're making the rest of us look really, really bad. So. Once again, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Also, like I said, I did hit 20,000 subscribers. I want to thank you guys so much. I truly appreciate it. If you want to put something down in the comments, I don't care what it is, toast, tacos, um, congratulations on 20,000. Plus, if you have any questions, please listen down below. I'm taking video ideas, other requests, stuff like that. Um, any information on my training and everything else will be on my website. I'll link it down below and we'll see you next video.